All right, I've been uh, getting uh, lots of um, questions about uh, different forms of cancer over the past few days. Oh, chocolate bliss rocks. Yeah, so this short recording is all about leukemia. So leukemia is um, it's blood cancer. Now there's a couple of problems just in general that you're probably served to be aware of if you've been, you know, uh, diagnosed with uh, leukemia. First off, um, you know, unless they've actually taken a bone drill and gone into your marrow and pulled out a marrow sample and determined that um, you've actually got a mutagenic activity or, a, you know, the production of mutagenic cells in your bone marrow, you, you, don't, you probably really don't have uh, blood cancer. So the doctors, um, there's two schools of thought. Uh, the tests, uh, first school of thought, the tests they do are designed to make sure that they take no chances. Um, I think it's more the second school of thought that the tests they do are meant to surface any little thing that's out of whack so they can uh, start uh, hacking and drugging you or radiating you or you know whatever other squamous, uh, heinous, nefarious witch doctor they'd like to do. And, you know, it's up to you if you start down that path. The problem is if you start down any kind of treatment path with an allopath, a uh, Western doctor, then, unfortunately, before you can ever start to work on the root cause of your symptom set, you're going to have to unwind whatever damage they've done from their, uh, you know, their butchery and druggery. So my suggestion is, first off, before you take a doctor's word about the test, uh, clean up your blood. Uh, because you may find that uh, when you clean up your blood, that um, uh, that may either resolve the the uh, the indication by the test that you have cancer, which could be false or positive, uh, which could be false or true. Uh, it may so also unload your body enough that uh, even if you've got a bone marrow, um, you know, a, a mutagenic uh, activity going on, producing mutagenic. Uh, uh, cells, blood cells out of your marrow that, uh, you know, if you unload off the, all the stress off your body, your body may have uh, enough internal reserve or energy to clean itself up, even at the bone marrow level. So, um, first off, let's talk about cleaning up um, your um, blood. And I guess to a certain extent, uh, lymph fluid too, although um, I, maybe there's some sort of cancer of the lymph fluid, although I, that's never... I've never heard of anybody having that. Um, the best thing to probably start with here would be to make sure that your lymph vessels are actually clearing so uh, nothing is backing up into your blood for uh, elimination. So your lymph system is supposed to be a huge, um, it's kind of a, um, uh, a huge uh, underground septic system is um, a, a good analogy in, in the real world. So your lymph, uh, your lymph fluid pumps by movement. You know, your your blood pumps by uh, heart and lung activity. You know, most people think it's only the heart, but your lungs are the actual the big big pump that's actually causing a lot of movement. Also, there's peristaltic action in your um, uh, both your veins, which carry blood out into your body, or your uh, arteries that carry uh, blood into your body, and veins that carry blood. Uh, back to your heart. So you've got a sin path. It's just like audio. You've got a sin path and a return path. And so arteries are the sin path, veins the return path. And uh, so there's peristaltic action, a squeezing action that squeezes uh, blood down those passages uh, just like your intestinal tract squeezes um, uh, food and uh, debris from your uh, mouth through your intestinal tract to your rectum. So uh, first thing is, uh, if you uh, ha make sure your lymphatic system is clean, and the easiest way to um, do a quick check of, to, of your lymphatic system state or uh, health is uh, your sleep patterns. So if you go to sleep quick and you wake up refreshed, then chances are you are, oh wait, you go to sleep quick, you stay asleep, uh, unless there's loud noise or you have to go to the bathroom, you know, um, uh, and you wake up uh, fresh or refreshed and ready to jump out of bed full of energy. That's a, the best indication your lymphatic system is um, working as it should be. 
So that means that as you're moving, your lymphatic system is clear and your lymph fluid through movement is pumping out of your body. If your lymphatic system is, is uh, clogged up, uh, there will come a certain point that if you can't flush debris out of your lymphatic system, it's got to go someplace. So it'll start going out of your skin, it'll back up into your blood, hopefully to be eliminated through your um, uh, urinary or your bowel uh, systems. So first step probably to dealing with, um, you know, making sure that you're, um, you've done everything you can to address uh, leukemia is to clean out your lymphatic system. Next thing is to clean out your um, uh, blood. And blood cleansing, there's kind of uh, two components, and this sort of goes uh, along with uh, lymphatic fluid also is, you know, your blood's primarily made of, uh, of water. And so, you know, if you're uh, drinking small amounts of water or you think that other fluids you're drinking, even even um, things like uh, if you're drinking a lot of chocolate bliss or superfood brews or uh, uh, fresh juice, none of those things are water. They are fluids. They are not water. And if you're drinking tea or coffee, not, uh, you know, none of that's water. And so for me personally, I drink, um, I weigh, um, I just weigh myself uh, and I, uh, well, two different scales. One, I weigh 170 and one, I weigh 180, which is the highest I've ever been. Um, and I'm feeling darn good, way better than when I weighed 130. Um, so um, uh, if you are going to um, think about your your blood and your lymph as primarily water, then that means, um, you know, any other liquid that you intake has got uh, some sort of precipitant matter in it. Uh, it's got, you know, minerals or, um, you know, some other, it makes no difference what it is. If it's different than oxygen and hydrogen, it's, uh, it ain't water. So for me, I usually drink between a gallon to two gallons of water uh, per day, that's just of, of water. And then I drink, uh, you know, a couple of quarts, uh, well, one to two quarts of chocolate bliss. Um, I'll also sometimes have a, a glass about this size, what is that, probably uh, 14, 16 ounces of um, uh, juice sometimes. And then most of the, the foods I eat are high water content, uh, which are... Um, uh, non-sweet fruits like uh, tomatoes, cucumbers, uh, avocados, coconuts, um, and even the vegetables I eat, uh, um, you know, the, the, uh, what most people consider vegetables are pretty high water content. So, uh, you know, things like, uh, you know, daikon radish or um, uh, broccoli leaves. I eat a lot of greens. So, in fact, this morning I was down in the garden um, uh, eating lamb's quarters, which is a, a real um, a strong green. And so uh, besides all the water and chocolate bliss I drink, uh, most of the foods I eat are high water content. So if you, you know, if you, to, to clean your blood, first off, you're going to have to get your water content up, uh, your water intake high enough that you've actually got enough uh, water turnover in your system that you're uh, getting cleaned out. Now, a lot of people, uh, the first thought they have when I talk about drinking a gallon or two of water a day, they say, well, you know, if I did that, I'd have to go to the bathroom all the time. So it's interesting. I go to the bathroom maybe every two, three, four hours. So the question is, where's all that water go? Uh, this is a ponderous question because somebody asked me this other day. Uh, well, the other day, uh, actually quite some time ago, and it's the first time I thought about it. And... My skin is, uh, like right now, um, I mean, it's pretty cool in here. It's probably 78, 80 degrees with the air on. And my skin is very moist. And so what I think, um, um, maybe there's some scientific data about this. My hypothesis or my theory is that uh, what we're supposed to do is drink enough water that the water can actually uh, move from the inside of our uh, fluid passages out through our skin and um, uh, be a uh, cleansing effect for our skin. So uh, I think very few people have enough water intake to actually clean all the layers of their tissue. And so most of the water that I drink, you know, it, it's either somehow immaculately, um, you know, 
transitioning into an alternative dimension, or it's coming through my skin. You know, it's uh, it's uh, aspirating or, or uh, respirating through my skin. Uh, so, um, uh, my first suggestion, if you've got any kind of um, uh, leukemia diagnosis, make sure you clean your blood up. So the first step is your water intake. Next step is your salt intake, because salt is the substance that allows us to hold water in both our fluids and tissue. If, um, if you're eating inappropriate quantity or quality of salt, you'll be unable to hold water in your tissues and actually have the water move through your tissues properly. So salt's the next thing. Um, that's one of the reasons that we package... Uh, I might have some salt here someplace. Um, yep. Uh, so we, when I say salt, what I mean by salt is uh, honest to gosh, uh, true salt. So if you look at this, this is um, uh, has a very uh, red quality to it. Uh, the red comes from uh, uh, hematite, which is um, is a um, a form of uh, uh, iron that's uh, very um, instrumental in helping us uh, build and maintain red blood cell health. So when I talk about salt, what I'm talking about is, honest to gosh, food salt. Now here's the challenge with the, the red salts too, and why we package our own salt now instead of, we used to be the largest uh, distribution channel for a couple of other um, uh, salt products, and we sent the salt out to have it assayed, and it came back with huge amounts of nickel, and the reason for that is that most um, Places that uh, red salt is ground in the Himalayans is ground on uh, very soft nickel grinders, and the salt rocks are harder than the nickel grinders. So when you grind salt rocks on nickel grinders, you end up actually grinding the grinder, and you end up with huge amounts of nickel. So my suggestion is, you know, salt is very cheap. I mean, we sell this is almost a kilo. It's two pounds for I think twenty bucks. So. You know, you're, you're best served to, uh, if, you're, um, if you're buying salt um, and you're buying it from somebody else, you best run assays on every big batch of salt you get to make sure that it's got no nickel in it. Because nickel is far more toxic than uh, the mercury in the fillings that everybody knows you ought to have out of your mouth <laughs> at this point. Um, so, um, um, I guess maybe talking a little bit about water would be good. Um, uh, water is a very complicated subject. Um, one of the easiest ways to have high quality water is to um, get an in-home Culligan water machine and take your water and freeze it. Um, so the Culligan machines, they're reverse osmosis, so they'll take all the particulate or a lot of the particulate matter out. And then if you freeze it, that's like a a ghetto redneck way of structuring water. If you freeze water and then thaw it out, it'll hold its uh, perfect structure for you know 12, 14 hours. Uh, so, uh, if you'd like to you know bump up a level, um, you can get in touch with me. And they're they're machines that um, oh, they're pretty inexpensive now, around down around the twelve to twelve hundred to fifteen hundred dollar mark. That are really good, high quality water machines that will. Um, structure water and also remove uh, particulate matter like uh, fluoride and uh, chloramine, which is what most municipalities are using instead of chlorine these days. Um, so the next step along the blood cleansing um, uh, checklist is uh, we got uh, water, salt. Um, the next step is cleaning up CICs. Now CICs is a big honking fancy term the doctors came up with to confuse you about a simple topic. Um, CICs uh, stands for circulating immune complexes. All that means is that you've got undigested or partially digested food floating around your bloodstream. That's all it means. Uh, so I guess they felt that it was more um, palatable for most people to hear that you, you've got CICs. That also has a little air of mysticism so they can start their butchery and uh, druggery on you instead of saying you got you know rotten meat and milk floating around your veins uh, which is you know the primary the the primary um, sources of CICs are uh, cooked food for sure uh, primarily though uh, animal products because animal products are so darn hard to digest um, so 
Uh, rule of thumb is, uh, you know, if you'd like to clean up your blood, um, you know, I, I hadn't eaten any animal products in probably, uh, I don't know, uh, no um, uh, cloven hoof products like uh, pig or um, uh, fowl or beef since the late 80s, and um, I did eat a little bit of salmon up through the early 90s, and that was the last time I ate any of that, so... You know, the whole thing about you got to have, uh, you know, you got to ingest uh, mystery cadaver to maintain health. That's a bunch of hooey. Actually, it's a bunch of crap. So crap stands for continually reducing attitude and performance. So if you eat crap food, you'll have a crap life. And if you'd like to continue to reduce your attitude and performance um, at the fastest, most intense rate, all you got to do is eat uh, cooked foods, refined processed foods, and especially lots and lots of animal products. Um, where uh, dairy is probably even worse than uh, flesh. So the immune complexes, the way you clean those up is, first thing is you stop eating the material that's contributing to generating more immune complexes, which is the, you know, the, the animal products. And then uh, the next thing is um, the way that you, the, well, the fastest way that you can clean up your blood is, I mean, you can just wait for um, a period of time and, you know, just, you know, try to live on twigs and berries. I wouldn't recommend that. Um, I uh, recommend you use something like a really high-grade digestive enzyme, which I might have a bottle of here. No, uh, we package an enzyme called uh, Primal Digest that um, is uh, geared towards uh, uh, vegans because, you know, if you're going to eat meat, um, you know, you're pretty much on your own. So, uh, enzymes uh, are probably the next step to both uh, clean up your blood and also um, if you think about it even if you're eating the best raw food in the world uh, the best superfoods in the world uh, enzymes degrade on a logarithmic basis in other words they don't degrade levelly over time and slowly like this they degrade exponentially over time so uh, it's something like half the enzymatic potential is lost after like a day or two days depending on exactly you know what it is the produce is and where it's harvested at what time, the ambient air temperature, lots of different factors. The bottom line is though that uh, as soon as you pick something out of its natural habitat, the enzymatic um, uh, proficiency or um, uh, component of uh, food begins to denature and break down. So the one of the things that Yamai and I take in pill form, I guess maybe Pretty much just about the only thing that we take in pill form um, are uh, enzymes and probiotics. Uh, uh, probiotics are uh, a little bit different. Enzymes sort of um, break down food into its um, component parts so it can be further broken down by uh, probiotics and also um, metabolized or reformed by probiotics so that the um, material or the food components that have been broken down by enzymes can can move out of the digestive tract across the digestive or intestinal wall. And also uh, probiotics are um, uh, very instrumental in um, uh, they're very instrumental in uh, producing uh, B vitamins. You know, most people think somehow they're going to get B vitamins from the food they eat and not, not so much. Uh, unless you're eating a really high quality uh, uh, nutritional uh, yeast that's been grown on a, a good substrate. Most of the nutritional yeast sold in stores, um, it's a really good way to have uh, candida and fungus overgrowth. Um, the nutritional flakes that we sell um, are from uh, PRL and they're really great at uh, uh, giving a big influx of B vitamins. Uh, so uh, let's uh, go down the list. Uh, uh, lots of, of clean water, uh, salt to hold water in our systems, uh, enzymes to uh, clean up the CICs. And, you know, at that point, um, you know, even, even a few days on that regimen is going to clean up a person's blood. And so, you know, if I, if I was diagnosed with uh, leukemia, um, that would be the if I was a mainstreamer. That would be the first thing I did. Now here's the other little uh, interesting thing about uh, leukemia. Uh, in fact, all cancer, the primary indicator is white blood cell count, 
And so if you have either a high white blood cell count or a low blood cell count, then you're considered in a immune compromised state. Here's the problem with that test. Uh, it only works for people that are sick because only people that are sick have high levels of white blood cells. If you are in great health, your white blood cell count will be very low. So you gotta be really careful if you're eating a pristine uh, raw food uh, diet primarily made of uh, superfoods, live foods, especially if you're eating primarily out of your own garden because what will happen is, if you're eating great food, there'll be no reason for you to have white blood cells because you'll have no uh, immune uh, complexes, these circulating immune complexes, or uh, any other um, uh, dead or denatured matter that uh, uh, comes about by the, um, the cooking or processing, the denaturing uh, process of uh, foods when they're taken out of their natural state into some other faux or fake state. So you got to be real careful if you end up, uh, you know, like uh, breaking a bone or something and having some, I almost said idiot doctor. It's not that they're idiots, they're just ignorant. Yeah, some ignorant doctor do a test on you that shows that you've got a really low uh, white blood cell count. Uh, because if they do that test and you've been eating well, your blood cell count is going to be low. So my suggestion is if they tell you, oh, you know, we got to start giving you lots of drugs or start uh, looking around for something to hack off, you do a 180 degrees and run. So um, that's, my, uh, that's my top list of um, um, blood uh, cleaning. Now, if you, know, if you go through that protocol for two or three weeks and you still test um, that you've got the indicators, there are some other indicators too that uh, can tell some about the state of um, blood cells that are being generated by marrow. Um, so if you know if you if you go through that protocol for two, three, four weeks and you still show up for leukemia, then you know maybe you have a challenge in your bone marrow and here's what I would do for that. Um, uh, I th imagine a couple of really simple ways to um, uh, support bone marrow health would be to uh, first off to use something like PRL's uh, liquid uh, uh, B complex and also um, our um, we, we just started packaging in fact I gotta announce it we started packaging little uh, five ounce containers that are just half camu camu and half acerola cherry powder so it's some of the most uh, bioavailable um, uh, vitamin C that you can get so if you start taking copious amounts of, uh, of true vitamin C and true um, uh, B vitamins, especially B12, then that's going to support uh, really great uh, bone marrow health. And, you know, if I did have a bone marrow situation going on where mutagenic uh, cells were getting created that were either determined by drilling a biopsy out of the bone or by tests after I'd done a uh, you know two three four week uh, protocol of doing blood cleaning, then I would uh, I'd probably go on a pretty heavy regimen of the B complex from uh, PRL. And here's the reason why: is uh, B12. Most people think of that as like you know you get a B12 shot to feel good. B12 is actually the physical material that your DNA is generated from. So what that means is if you've been eating um, uh, foods that have been enriched oh my god what a bizarre um, stupid term that is it's just a flat-out ball face lie uh, enriched foods mean that you know whatever they're enriched by is just going to be toxic sludge more than likely if if you're lucky it'll be um, inert material and if you're unlucky it'll be toxic sludge so it's either non-nutrients or anti-nutrients or this uh, enrichment technology I got news uh, you know uh, humans thinking they're smarter than God that's just arrogance. Uh, there ain't no uh, enrichment process you can do better than going and picking something out of a, uh, your own garden to eat or getting it from another farmer or out of your produce section of your local grocery store, which don't mean black hole foods. Um, you know, the quality of their produce is pretty darn low. I'd recommend you uh, look for alternatives. Uh, most of the produce we buy ain't from black hole foods. Uh, so, um, 
uh, B vitamins to support the, especially B12 to support the uh, regeneration of uh, cell material because bone marrow cells turn over very, very rapidly. Uh, you know, your bone marrow is churning out uh, uh, blood cell um, material all the time. So um, it, it will probably take, uh, I'd have to look it up, it uh, shouldn't take more than a few days or weeks to uh, turn around a, uh, a bone marrow uh, problem that's coming from uh, uh, fake B vitamins causing uh, DNA confusion. So, for example, if you think about if uh, real B12 is what DNA is generated from, if you're taking uh, fake B12, uh, synthetic B12, especially in concentrated amounts like shots or uh, sublingual, imagine if you tried to um, build a house out of uh, cardboard instead of lumber or brick. You might be able to build a house and that puppy is coming down pretty darn quick. It's either going to rot into the weather or the first storm that comes along is going to blow it down. So if you build your uh, DNA out of fake B12, you're going to have fake DNA. So the easy way to fix that is you, you know, pump your body full of uh, honest to gosh true B12 and other B vitamins because B12 has to have other B vitamins to metabolize with it. Uh, the other thing that I'd use too as a um, uh, a strong facilitator along with uh, enzymes because enzymes are catalysts so you have to have enzymes for anything to happen in your, in your body and vitamin C just because vitamin C is so integral to so many metabolic processes that if you're taking synthetic vitamin C good freaking luck. Um, uh, the other item uh, would be blue-green algae and when I say blue-green algae what I'm talking about I just know if you can see this. Yeah, you know, most blue-green algae comes in capsules or caplets, which is you know they're just toxic sludge. Um, blue-green algae ought to be able you ought to be able to hold it up to the sun and it looks uh, iridescent. And that's why we got a uh, license from the only coal processing harvester in Klamath Lake to uh, pull out um, uh, high quality, just straight uh, blue-green algae flakes. So the way blue-green algae works is very, very interesting. Um, and I choose to know if this is, uh, research has been released to the public or not. If, if I can find it, I'll put a, a uh, link in um, you know, where this video is on uh, YouTube. Um, it's interesting because uh, blue-green algae is so human biocompatible that it will cross the blood-brain barrier it will also cross the placental wall and be absorbed by a uh, fetus. And there are very, very few um, foods that will pass through the blood-brain barrier and the placental barrier. Also, blue-green algae is very interesting because uh, once it's absorbed into the bloodstream, it's absorbed intact rather than being broken down. And this is really interesting because blue-green algae has a... Um, um, it's different than spirulina and chlorella and most of the other greens have a cellulose or um, very strong uh, plant fiber sort of um, matrix that the nutrients are held in. Blue-green algae is a glycogen or a long chain polysaccharide. So as, as polysaccharides or sugars get longer and longer chains, they start getting more and more bitter, uh, which is why Camu Camu is one of the longest polysaccharide chains and it's, it's one of the most bitter. That's why it's so biocompatible also is that is the sugar uh, structure breaks down and releases the nutrients very easy. So blue-green algae is a, um, a polysaccharide uh, bundle of uh, essential sugars, amino acids, uh, minerals, and uh, antioxidants, which are pigments, uh, and you know, hence the very dark green color. Uh, so what blue-green algae does is it circulates around our bloodstream intact for six to eight hours. And our body, you know, these uh, complexes of blue-green algae are floating around our body will shave off the uh, complexes of blue-green algae, shave off essential sugar complexes, amino acids, and minerals and other nutrients as needed. So, you know, a, a simple, uh, really rapid uh, reboot of your uh, bone marrow system could potentially be you know, making a simple uh, drink of, um, um, you know, blue-green algae, uh, some B-complex, uh, vitamin C, a uh, pinch of salt, and really good water. And then, you know, put some vanilla agave uh, in that to sweeten it. And I know some people are saying, oh, my God, sugar where cancer is involved. 
uh, most of the people that have cancer that come to us, um, uh, you know, they'll they'll eat uh, high sugar content foods, and it seems to have no uh, effect on them one way or another. Because once you clean up your diet of the really big stressors like animal products, things like sugar, as long as it's um, uh, sugar in a fairly natural state, which includes agave, um, doesn't uh, seem to have any effect. Now, here's the thing about agave. And, uh, you know, I uh, hear people are always disparaging about agave. Here's the way you test your agave. You get a $15 glucose meter from your local pharmacy and you test your blood sugar. Good agave should not change your blood sugar. In other words, here's the way we test agave when we source agave is I take a quarter cup of agave and mix into one cup of water after going off our enzymes for at least three days because I found that I couldn't move my blood sugar at all if I was taking our enzymes. So, you know, even if you're using skanky, um, skanky, that's a technical term, uh, less than the best agave nectar, it appears that if you are using our enzymes every day, it makes no difference. Um, so what I do is I go off enzymes for three days and I take a quarter cup of agave nectar, mix it into a cup of water, drink that down, and start checking my blood sugar every 10-15 um, minutes. Uh, some agave nectars I've had move my blood sugar 35% in like 15 or 20 minutes. Increase my blood sugar. The agave nectar that we source right now, uh, whenever I check my blood sugar, it either leaves my blood sugar the same or even drops it which is a whole other conversation about why I think that happens. Anyway, that's the, that's the test that you can test if a sugar is uh, useful to you or um, an anti-nutrient is just get a $15 blood uh, glucose meter. Don't believe anybody that tells you anything about glucose because most of them are just, I don't know if they're liars, they've just never taken the time to actually test their blood sugar. If somebody's talking about blood sugar sometime, you should ask them, well, when's the last time you poked your finger with a, blood, with a glucose meter and checked your blood sugar? So this brings up the uh, closing topic here. How to know who to take advice from. Here's how you know. First off, you find somebody who uh, has um, a particular state you'd like to have, whether it's in your business, health, relationship, whatever. They, they are where you'd like to be. In other words, if you'd like to be a millionaire, you don't ask your, you know, brother-in-law that's fixing carburetors or fuel injector systems at the local auto shop. No. Uh, you ask somebody that's a multimillionaire. So you got to have some, talk to somebody who has what you desire and is able to uh, clearly communicate how you can duplicate what they did and also is willing to communicate and then can give you simple... Um, technologies you can use to measure or prove out your theories and hypotheses as you're going along your journey. So for example, I gave you the, the uh, glucose meter test. So rather than believing anybody about uh, glucose, you test yourself with a meter. Rather than believing anybody about uh, salt is bad, which is just, that's just stupid as a bag of hammers, every farmer knows that if you don't put a salt block in a field with uh, livestock, They'll crib. They'll go chew on trees. They'll dig up dirt and eat it. They'll lick the rust off bumpers. Salt is essential to life. Sugar is essential to life. Fat's essential to life. Um, so you know most of the um, uh, the uh, huckstering that all these so-called health experts are doing, or uh, you know the advice they're giving out is uh, it's just um, violates all. Um, uh, common sense and critical thought. So that wraps up our um, uh, uh, leukemia, all about the leukemia today, cleaning up your blood, uh, water, salt, uh, enzymes, uh, cleaning up your marrow, um, uh, B vitamins, especially B12, and blue-green algae. So if you um, happen to be diagnosed with leukemia and you go through a uh, protocol or procedure of cleaning up your blood and your marrow, be sure and, and uh, be in touch with me and tell me about your experiences. Tell me, you know, uh, what your situation was and how you reversed it, and I'll pass it along to the tribe. Enjoy.